Radio Retro News. News about new old stuff. Well, there's the NES Classic or Nintendo Entertainment System Classic. That's new, and definitely an old video game console, which has been brought back. There's an all-new Sega Mega Drive. Yeah, basically the Sega Genesis. There's even some TurboGrafx-16 news. And actually, once I get around to mentioning it, after I talk about pretty much everything else, it all leads me to talk about the Retro Freak. The Retro Freak? That thing seems pretty cool. Hello, welcome to my kitchen. For no other reason than it was a quick and easy place to put up the, the camera. Alright, that looks like a good enough spot to put the camera. You hear sort of a... It's not exactly a hum, but if you hear some background noise, it could be just the quality of the camera I'm using, or it could be an electric heater going in the background. It's December! It's, eh, it's cold. And anyway, what am I here to talk about? Retro video games, yeah. This year, uh, not that long ago, uh, I I'm, didn't run out to get one. I'm not really all that concerned if I miss it either. The NES Mini came out, or the Mini NES, the Micro, whatever. But it looks interesting. Uh, there's a few games on there that I don't have in my collection, because I never did get the original Castlevania. It was Castlevania 2 was the one that really interested me of the NES Castlevanias, because that was the one where you had the passage of time, day and night. It was like this big adventure. I wasn't as into the regular Castlevania, though I was always interested in the series overall. It was the second one that really got my interest. Uh, that's on there. And <coughs> quite a variety of games, and you can plug it into a TV which, with an HDMI output, which a lot of people say makes the games look a lot better on HD TVs if you hook the games up with the HDMI output. And it depends on your television. Like, when you hook up video game systems with the AV cables to high-definition televisions, a lot of people have problems with lag and, and different negative effects. I've never had that problem hooking things up with regular AV cables to high-definition televisions. Uh, I've usually found things turned out quite well, though whenever possible I like using old cathode ray tube televisions, the old CRT televisions. Every HD TV I've been exposed to had AV cables as well as HDMI. So I don't really care that outputs HDMI. Um, yeah, just that's straightforward. Uh, but it does look like an interesting device. I think the price is reasonable unless you try to buy it off eBay. Apparently people are selling it for crazy prices there. Oh well, I don't really care that much about it. I was more interested in the Retrobit Generations, which comes with a really cool looking controller, Sega Genesis style, and if I'm going to pick a controller that I'm going to play NES, SNES, and Genesis, and also arcade games with, I'd go with the Genesis style controller. Unless the buttons are mapped in a way that makes it awkward for anything other than a Super Nintendo controller, except for that, except for those situations, the Genesis controller is almost always the better option. Uh, and if you can remap the buttons, yeah, you're going to find a ways to use the Genesis controller really good. So... The Retrobit Generations looks interesting to me as a new dedicated console, but apparently the emulation is poor for it. Oh well. So that one's a little less interesting to me as well, but that one has both HDMI and AV output, which is what I think they all should have, both HDMI and AV output. HDMI is the superior signal, but AV cables are the common ones that work with just about everything. Um, so, Retrobit Generations, <coughs> I'm not as excited for that one. Something I am really excited for is the Brazilian Sega Mega Drive with all new chips, but all new chips that are designed to work like the old computer chips that were in the original Sega Genesis or Sega Mega Drive. It's a, a real proper Sega Mega Drive styled after the Model 1, um, except it has a SD card slot. That's right, a Sega Mega Drive with an SD card slot being released new from Brazil. It should be out next month. Unfortunately, the company that's making it, Tech Toy, which is known for quality, is not going to be shipping it around.
around the world, so uh, I guess eBay will be the only way to get that. So that, mo that motherfucker's going to be jacked up in price, probably. Because everybody wants one. Now, that is really cool. The NES Mini has all the Nintendo fans running out to get it. To me, uh, the NES was something that played a very important role in getting me interested in video games. There were three forces that got me into video games. Atari... Commodore 64, specifically the 64 computer, but Commodore, Atari with the 2600. Uh, even though I played my Atari 2600 games on uh, ColecoVision with the adapter, I was more into Atari than I was into Coleco. But I definitely appreciate Coleco. Atari, Commodore, and Nintendo. The Nintendo Entertainment System, when I couldn't afford to get myself a Commodore 64 as a kid, I managed to scrape up enough money to get close to getting a getting a Nintendo Entertainment System. I saved allowances for a long fucking time. <coughs> I got myself a Nintendo Entertainment System as a kid. I really wanted a Commodore 64, but the NES did what I wanted in a video game system. Uh, the Atari 2600 would have done more for me if I knew more about some of the games that were out there that I would have loved. And uh, I still have my Nintendo Entertainment System. And as much as that is, I feel like Nintendo Entertainment System still feels overhyped. As nostalgic as I am for it, because for a time, it was the be-all and end-all in video games for me. Hell, it's the reason why I got a Nintendo Game Boy, to expand my Nintendo games, uh, my Nintendo game collection. Um, and the Game Boy was a piece of crap. Uh, actually, it was wonderful. It was great. The screen was horrible. You were constantly moving to make sure the light was on the right angle with it. When you're holding it, your fingers get cramped. And cramped like I'd never see in a video game controller ever again until the Nintendo 64. May the Nintendo 64 burn in hell with those fucking controllers. Uh, but yeah, the Game Boy, it, I love it. It was great. Uh, I had fun with it. Uh, I still have it. But it, it was flawed. Uh, it was, you know, but I loved it. It was Nintendo. The Nintendo Entertainment System was awesome. It was the everything that was video games in its time. <coughs> of course, the Super Nintendo eventually came out, and most of the franchises that I really enjoyed on the Nintendo Entertainment System, they moved on to the Super Nintendo, but I didn't find them as fun, so I jumped on board with Sega Genesis. So, it took a lot to pry me away from Nintendo, but the Sega Genesis was awesome, um, and to me, re-releasing... A new model Sega Genesis that's basically the Model 1, but enhanced with an SD card slot. That is really fucking cool. I am way into that. That is awesome to me. I, I want one of those. I probably, I don't know if I'll get one of those. But I want one of those. Y yeah, that's something I want. That 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 is too fucking awesome. Uh, and a lot of people are really interested. There's a lot of hype for it. Because it's not just another one of those stupid little fucking at games consoles that don't get the sound right. Graphics are usually off just a tiny bit with the at games. You can forgive that. Maybe boost up the brightness and contrast on your television. And you forgive that. But the sound is way fucked on a lot of those clone consoles. And many of them are officially licensed by Saga. Oh, there's also a new portable um, um, Atari 2600 uh, console from, I think, at games does that. That games also does portable Sega Genesis's and Atari consoles. Hey, pretty fucking cool. Atari Flashback Portable. That is interesting as well. But uh, the fact that At Games, At Games, no Tech Toy, Tech Toy in Brazil, Tech Toy in Brazil is making a proper Sega Mega Drive. That is fucking awesome. That that is something I would love to get my hands on. Even if it's, even some people think it's a little bit expensive. I don't care! I fucking want it! Now that is really cool. Other news, uh, Konami has recently trademarked uh, the name Turbo Graphics. Some people think there's a chance they might release a Turbo Graphics mini console. If they do, me want. I don't have a Turbo Graphics. I didn't get one at the time. When I originally liked some Super Nintendo games but was a bit disappointed and decided to go with Sega Genesis, the reason why I picked Sega Genesis was Sonic the Hedgehog looked awesome. And it was. Sega Genesis had a new Ghostbusters game. 
and it had the power base converter so I could play an older Ghostbusters game, which was the original Ghostbusters game I was thinking about going for when I got a Nintendo Entertainment System with the Ghostbusters game that was on the Nintendo Entertainment System. I almost got a Sega Master System. But I heard more people had Nintendo Entertainment Systems and there were more games for the Nintendo Entertainment System. So I got the Nintendo Entertainment System near the end of the 1980s. But that said, Turbo Graphics, I remember ads for Turbo Graphics. I knew there was one person who had one. I very rarely saw them in stores, but I knew of their existence. And I remember seeing, like, um, in game magazines, stuff like uh, um, the. Turbo Duo and uh, the Turbo Graphic CD games and stuff like Exile, Wicked Phenomenon. So Turbo Graphics was always an interest of mine. And while I did scrape up the money for a 3DO <coughs> later when it was used and not as expensive, and got into the 3DO, I was also always curious about Atari Jaguar, which yeah, it does have some good games, if it, even if it doesn't have a lot. The Atari Jaguar is an interest of mine, but I never did get one. And I want one. Atari 7800. I want an Atari 7800. But Turbo Graphics was always there. And the Turbo Duo was always an interest of mine, especially because it already had the CD add-on. And I believe the Super Chip add-on. It was all right there in one package. Now, if Konami releases like some sort of Turbo Graphics Mini... A chance to play Turbo Graphics games and not emulate it. Because I wasn't that into emulation. Uh, my nose is itchy. Yeah. My nose does that a lot. Uh, I'm not that big into emulation. Uh, I'm okay with emulation, but I don't know. Setting, setting up the emulators on my computer very rarely seem. It just doesn't feel the same as playing the actual game. Sometimes I'll get really into emulation. Before I managed to get my own Fantasy Star cartridge, uh, the first Fantasy Star, I played through it emulated. Uh, but for the most part, I, I prefer some sort of actual hardware. So if Konami actually released uh, Turbo Graphics Mini, that would give me some respect for them. If they replace, if they released a disc for contemporary consoles, or even for the PC, an actual disc with uh, Turbo Graphics Classics emulated on it, I'd also love that. Uh, Konami is not known for being very much in favor of video gamers anymore. <coughs> so I'm not expecting them to do anything impressive, but there's always hope. I mean, they, they, they have the rights to the companies that own the TurboGrafx-16. They, they trademark the name. Maybe something good will come of it. I can hope. But while I'm on this, I talked about the... Uh, Really, the NES Mini is a form of clone console, but it's a really high-end one and licensed by Nintendo. Tech Toy making the new uh, Sega Mega Drive, uh, also licensed by Sega. And they are an official manufacturer of Sega goods for Brazil. And I, I wish that they did shipping for to Canada, you know, uh, or anywhere else. I wish they did worldwide shipping, you know. But Tech Toy, yeah. And, like, this is, these are all, in a way, clone consoles or rebuilt in the case of the new Mega Drive, which, to me, that's fucking awesome. Uh, what can I say about cloned consoles? I mean, the Retrobit Generations is a dedicated console and known for disappointing. I have a Super Retro Trio that is great, but I also have a Super Retro Trio that sucks. And, sadly, the more recently manufactured of the two is the one that sucks. Uh, it wasn't it wasn't what I wanted, so I had to get an older model, which is one of the greatest devices in retro gaming. But I don't recommend going out for the Super Retro Trio. I've talked about it in other videos, but I don't recommend getting a Super Retro Trio uh, Trio unless you know for sure it's the good version, the one that gets the Sega Genesis and Super Nintendo sound correctly, allows you to play all game systems through the eh, uh, through the Sega Genesis control ports. And uh, thus it would also come with a Sega Genesis compatible controller that's Super Nintendo styled, but you can still use Sega Genesis controllers with it. Um, shocker, motherfucker, shocker. Yeah. Uh, you know, the, unless you can, if you know for sure it's the good version, I say get it. Those things are fucking awesome. But there's also a bad version that comes with a Super Nintendo style controller that is compatible with being plugged into a Super Nintendo, 
but it doesn't work with Super Nintendo games, at least not properly. Yeah, go figure. But, but on the Super Retro Trio, it will work with Nintendo Entertainment System and Genesis games. And that version of the Super Retro Trio also does sound really, really poorly. So, I, I don't recommend the Super Retro Trio because I have no way of knowing. If, if I knew that they only made the good version, that they went back to making the good version, I'd say, get it! Best thing in retro games ever! But I don't recommend it because I don't know what version you're going to get. Uh, there's the Retron 5. A lot of people hate it, disappointed with it. I was interested in it because I like the idea. It I think it only does HDMI, but hey, you know, it's the future of televisions. I mean, it's good to have some of that stuff. <coughs> like I said, I normally use AV cables. Yeah. I'm outdated! So, if you don't like that, fuck you. But, you know, HDMI, you know, a way to play older game consoles with HDMI. Good, fine. Uh, they say the emulation's bad in it, though, or not perfect. And a lot of people like it, a lot of people hate the fact that it copies the games into its hardware and then emulates it. But I thought it was interesting because it can make and hold its own version of the save games. So to me, that's a way of backing up your save games, which I thought was kind of interesting. But... It was interesting to me, but it wasn't something I was going to rush out and get. But it was interesting for those differences. Then I discovered something. Uh, there's a, something called the Retro Engine, which is not out yet. That looks like it might be kind of cool. It's modeled after the Sega Genesis or Sega Mega Drive. And it looks really cool from an external hardware perspective. I'd say this thing's awesome. Will it actually play the games well? No fucking clue. Can't say one way or the other. But something that is tested and out there, and you have to import it from, I think it's either China or Japan, or maybe both, the Retro Freak. I want a fucking Retro Freak! Now, this is a clone console that looks awesome to me. It, it's kind of like emulation, like the Retron 5, but most people don't have any complaints about the emulation on this one. So, it does the emulation well. Now, it, the weird thing about it is it doesn't do NES unless you have a converter. By default, it's Famicom. Which is fine by me. I could use something with a Famicom slot so I don't have to use that converter with my Nintendo Entertainment System. And I already have lots of clone consoles that can do NES. And in fact, the Super Retro Trio does NES very well. So, although I do like the idea of a clone console playing NES, <coughs> uh, and this thing does require a converter for it, uh, more sold on the other things, such as the fact the slot on this is... Famicom styled, so you just you can plug your Famicom cartridges straight into it, which is the Japanese, you know, Nintendo Entertainment System, and you need an adapter to fit or to properly plug North American cartridges into it. That's cool. It's got a Sega Mega Drive slot or Sega Genesis that requires a converter to play Master System games, but if you get the converter, it'll do Master System, SG1000, uh, Sega Mark III, and Sega Game Gear. Fucking awesome, man. Uh, but it requires a converter for that. But still, fucking awesome. Um, it has a slot for Game Boy, which also includes Game Boy Advance and Game Boy Color. Good, fine, you know. has Super Nintendo or Super Famicom, a slot for that. Great, good. Here's where I think it's really fucking awesome. Finally, a clone console with a slot for Turbo Graphics and PC Engine. Eh, something I didn't collect, but I want. So... I don't know if the emulation is really perfect for this thing. The online videos I've seen have indicated that it, it is good. But the fact that finally a clone console does PC Engine and Turbo Graphics, the cards anyway, I think that's fucking awesome. I think they should come out with an add-on for this that will do discs and then maybe add Sega CD to the list. Uh, especially, hopefully, add Turbo Graphics CD to it if, if, you know, if they ever come up with a CD add-on for the Retro Freak, because there is an add-on that lets you use all the old controller types with this. So, that that's pretty cool. But, anything that plays Turbo Graphics cards, <coughs> that has my interest. That's the clone console that has my interest. NES, you can get a Nintendo Entertainment System. They're all over the place. Sega Genesis, there's lots of those. Super Nintendos, 
all over the fucking place. Sega Master System, not that hard to come by. Go on eBay. You know, it's like, but Turbo Graphics, because of the number of them that's out there, and PC Engine, its Japanese counterpart, the numbers for those are low enough. They're out there. There's plenty of them out there. But the price has really gone up over the decades. Yeah, decades. It's been a while. Um, so, yeah. A clone console, even if it's an emulation box, that does Turbo Graphics 16 and PC Engine. I'm interested. I am interested in that. So, the top of my list for things that are interesting in retro consoles, I would say the most interesting of them to me is Tech Toys, Brazilian manufactured, all new, all officially licensed, Sega Mega Drive that looks like it's going to be properly compatible with the old games and has an SD card. That one is at the top of my interest list. That one along with the Retro Freak, which does TurboGrafx-16. And it, it works with USB controllers. And all the original controllers if you get an adapter. Yeah, that, that's to me. Retro Freak and uh, new Sega Mega Drive with the flashcard slot. Those two, those two items are at the top, the top most interesting, to me, my own personal opinion, the most interesting of all these retro video game devices. So that's, that's my thoughts on retro video game consoles at this time. And yeah, hopefully you enjoyed this video. I appreciate it if you click like. Um, I got nothing left to say.